made pretty much, you know, does a, a lot for this complexity squad. Now it is all about making those right decisions in the clutch times, because to your point, this is going to be one of those really important games. You know, it's bubble versus bubble, right? You're desperately, desperately fighting against each other for a top four spot and for complexity. Of course, their first win here in the league. And they are not playing too aggressive on this hill. It's actually going to be dashy that's inside. And yeah, he gets taken down. That was a bit of a weird approach off the rip. Like they had everything smoked off. They had clearance to go to the hill, but they didn't really want to push through. And by the time center does, he's like slowly walking around the corner. And then he's got like two ARs and a sub kind of look at him. So it's a great start for Mind Freak. They're going to be in the hill. There's one player left, I think, for complexity that could do some damage. It's going to be dashy, but Fida makes a smart play. Juggles the hill a little bit, goes on the outside, picks up uh, the kill, goes back for the hill time. And we're going to have a noticeable lead, 40-something seconds to one for Cole. Yeah, great stuff for Mindstreak. Fighter's going to pick up that scrap time. Now it's about winning those gunfights in rotation. Complexity, they're going to have the early setup now for the second hard point. Will they be able to just kind of chip away at the early Mind Freak lead? Again, nothing too ridiculous, of course, but we'll see if Mind Freak can try and break through Complexity. Staying on board with Sensor for now. Ready and waiting for that Mind Freak push. And this is an interesting spot that we don't get a lot of opportunity to see people play, but at least for Hardpoint, you're worried about the nades. They're all getting thrown into the hill, playing behind the pillar. Not a bad position to be in at all. Uh, so complexity. Uh, again, they're working on the comeback. Mind Freak are getting spawn trapped over in uh, the back of bridge. Now Dash is posted up top, and that's exactly where you want your AR, but you got to win the gunfights as well. So Sensor has to make the adjustment to pick up some hill time. Dash goes mid map off spawn as well. He's going to have a gunfight against Fighter, and he's going to win it as well. So Mind Freak basically pin back bridge they've not been able to get past that mark uh, of the map at all and because of that look at what it's done to the score chance 45 to 42 now keep your eyes on number five on the mini map that's going to be shocks for my free trying to go for that rotation towards bunker of course such an important hill a money hill but so far i mean you look at what complexity just did to ruins they turned that into a money hill they kept the spawns they have control of bunker this is not looking good for my free so the best forest hardpoint team we've seen in the league so far is evil geniuses something we've seen them do if they have the back bridge spawn on the second hill Apathy rotates with 30, 35 yeah, seconds left. Like, we see him back bunker, and there's 25 seconds left on the clock for the Ruins Hill. Mind Freak, no one even crossed mid-map until there was, like, eight seconds left to rotate. So Complexity gets the perfect setup. Since then, though, Mind Freak, you see a lot of blue in that kill feed. You got Fida coming through fire cut. Now we can push forward and, at the very least, contest this hill. And you see the smokes. It buys his time that they can come in inside. So, well, Shox is going to be there. He's only able to pick up one, and the aggression does not pay off for Mind Freak on the break. And you have to give big props to complexity they go from ruins to bunker flawless hold on ruins a flawless hold thus far on bunker 13 seconds left that's pretty much all but there's of course now mind freak of course getting the back bunker spawn not what you want in this situation east road it looks as if may have to go to complexity early so complexity stringing together back to back hills so far chance looking the better team so far yeah it, it was the worst cave hill possible and since then it's just been uh, about as perfect as you could really ask for outside of maybe a, a couple gunfights here and there, but that's just Call of Duty. Now you got Ricky inside the hill. He's going to get taken down, but East Road, it is impossible to stay alive inside of that hill for more than 10 seconds at a time. The nades come in. You got multiple players shooting you. Sensor is going to have a player coming up on the flank, and, well, he turns just for a second, but the timing wasn't quite there. Uh, but either way, uh, again, East Road, not too much cooking. The more important thing is you see who is Dashy posted up on the cabin wall. As long as he stays in that position, they're not going to lose this hill. And of course, it's on the, the rest of complexity to get inside. But Shox picks up too. So scrappy ish on East Row. But either way, complexity double the score of their opponent. Yep. 113 to 52, the final 10 seconds left of East Road. However, it's still complexity controlling cabin, so that rotation over towards the, the new hill, the first hill of the second rotation, should be good for complexity. But Dens trying to go for a little bit of a pinch, cleans out. It was Blast that was actually in the hill as it pops. So, of course, this was the hill my freak had a ton of success at the very start of the game. They're going to have to repeat here if they want to try and reduce the deficit. Well, so far, so good. They've got essentially everything covered, and they got three kills down. So now you have the opportunity for the perfect setup on Cave. Complexity for the break. They're sending one player on the full flank who's probably going to be able to shoot shocks in the back, but Dash is going to fall before that happens, so it's going to slow Complexity just push down uh, at least just by one man. And again, these things that buy you 10, 15 seconds, one guy goes on the flank, but it takes so Long. Now, now think about this, right? Mind Freak controlled the first hills just for a, a ton of time in the first rotation. Look how close this game is. Bear in mind the success complex he had on Ruins and Bunker. Mind Freak have done a really good job just to keep the score as close as they can. Are they going to have another full, what, 120 hold? 
Probably not. So for, for Mind Freak here, I think they've done extremely well to keep this as close as they have, considering how much complexity dominated the first rotation of Hills. And for the moment, they're on the good spawn for the rotation of Bunker. I know that's 60 seconds in advance, but as long as Mind Freak plays it mildly well, they're going to be exactly, in at least right? a halfway decent spot. So that's what Blast has worked on. You tell as well. He's trying to push that out, trying to get those spawns to flip, but he's going to fall. And now you got players who has that dashy. He's sitting in you watching mid map. There's a lot of pressure coming in from Bell, so you got to go and help, but he's going to fall. So does Sensor. Ricky's in the hill, but he's going to have three players gunning him down. And just like that, Mind Freak breaks through. And we've seen this situation before. It's now complexity they're spawning in the back. This is where Apathy would rotate. Yeah, that's this is saying. where someone would go. And they would go all the way through the top side of the map to go to Bunker. And let's see if anyone does it right now. Do it. That, yeah. that she would have been the perfect player to do it. Comes off spawn. And instead, they keep funneling through. Do they break the hill? Yes. But you're fighting now over what is essentially scrap time. They're going to have to give it up. And now all of complexity are basically forced to go cabin side and go for the rotation to Bunker. Yeah, this is just going to be like a reflood in granite. They're all four working together, but time is not on their side. Power positions are not on their side because they can't post up on the head glitches because they have to go to the next hill. Denz is sitting fire cut. He's just going to play the cleanup crew. He's going to be able to find two, and that is three times now. We have seen all four members of Complexity all spawn up back bridge. Now they're trying to flood from a different directions, but they're feeding streaks to Fida. Not a good look right now if you're a Cole fan. Yeah, Fida picks up his glide bomb. Curious to see when he actually wants to use it. Of course, he does have teammates working towards streaks as well. Den's particularly close. 200 points away from a glide bomb of his own. Half point's going to be contested, but that doesn't matter too much. Shocks win the gunfight in the hill. My freak have done extremely well here on the second rotation of hills. The lead is growing 160 to 126. Still 30 seconds left of bunker. And if I'm honest, complexity look almost clueless here in the second rotation of hills. My freak have played this phenomenally well. I mean, we saw a situation on this exact same map for complexity yesterday where Blast gets off to a disgustingly good start. Everything's going well, and then somehow they still lose the game. The slaying power is not always the problem for complexity. The positioning and the rotation certainly are, and that's something you need to work on. But, like, who's the guy for complexity? Like, uh, Rise has Looney. He's the guy. Apathy for Evil Geniuses, who even though they're the SMG, they handle the rotations. Who's that intelligent player for complexity that's putting his team in a, a spot where they can succeed? Tough to call, that's it for is. sure, and especially based off what we've seen in the second rotation, uh, it's been pretty brutal. Now, of course, we go over to East Road. The score 193, 135, complexity down, but they are getting a little bit of time on East Road. But to your point, in the first rotation chance is very rare. You expect to see a full 60 picked up on East Road, that's for sure. The kill feed pretty much split, blue and red. Thens may jump in the hill, and I'd love to see him pick up the 100 points here, which he does. Now, honestly, you could hop off this hill. Bear in mind how close the streaks you are. 575, you're just putting yourself in a position to be naded. You could just bait out your teammates, go for a juggle, allow Complexity to jump in the hill, see if you can trade a kill, pick up the extra 100 points, you get streaks. Yeah, you're right. In my opinion, primary goal number one on East Road, uh, obviously maybe not too late into the game, but at least early on, is to get streaks. If anyone is remotely close, that should be your job. That's something like Tommy for Spice, which is a, a, a beast at. There's a handful of players that just play the hill oh so well so it's not wrong what fight it did it just could have been better but either way we're back to cave mind freak they got a 50 point lead and this is where they have been ever so successful so far ricky's in the hill he's got some help to cover him as well uh we got players fire cut actually shocks with a pbsh it is cleaning out the guy that was supposed to be in the hill and that's the power of mind freak on cave now keep your eye on number one that's going to be sensor on the mini map he has a really important decision to make is he going to go through fire alley potentially pinch or push all the way through bunker Picks Fire Alley, there's one call out comes through. Can he find Fighter as well? Sensor in such an important position here because no, Mind Freak is still spawning back bunker. You have to worry about the hill because you don't want to give Mind Freak too many uh, points, of course, but you have to worry about the spawns as well. Sensor doing a good job of staying alive, but he needs to make a decision. He needs to be proactive because Mind Freak's still going to spawn back bunker. If he stays Fire Alley, he isn't really manipulating the spawns in the way he wants to. Well, at the very least, he is keeping Mind Freak somewhat contained, but he is going to get cleaned up, fire cut. So uh, that's the first time Complexity has broken through on the Cave Hill and gotten any amount of time, but it's only for the final couple of seconds. Now we're fighting over into Ruins, and, well, right now they have the back bridge spawn. That is not ideal. They're going to have to fight through. Dashy, though, he's inside the hill. He's in the power position, and by the time you say it, he's dead to a nade. And now we've seen it time and time again. Mind Freak in the best possible spot where they can close out this game. The nades are getting reined in, but Denz isn't even challenging the gunfight. He's got his teammates to help him out. They have a little bit of U control. They got a guy on the pillar. Now they're pushing up and keeping him contained. Mind Freak are going to win this game here, Ben. Yeah, it looks that way. Ricky spawns back bunker. He's going to need a miracle nade to put pressure on the hill. Finally, Complexity get the spawns they desire, but with four seconds left, unless some crazy moments happen, that is all going to be Mind Freak. 250 
from 174, map number one. And, you know, you, you talk about the rotations of hills that we saw. First rotation, Mind Freak held the first hill, but did just great damage limitation, if you will, for the remainder uh, of the first rotations. The Spike Complexity having a good ruins and a good bunker. But then after that, it, it was just almost flawless play from Mind Freak. And to be honest, maybe some lazy play from Complexity sneaking through. And, and how insane is that, that you go, you go from cave, Complexity doesn't do well, but they play the next three hills about as perfectly as you really can. And Ruins in like Bunker, those are huge hills to be able to chain together. They, they play that nearly perfectly, but then by the time you go back to Cave once again at the end of that, it's almost a tie game. Just because of Cave Hill off the rip, even when Complexity right. actually does have great rotations uh, on the outset, it's still close. Then the next time around, Mind Freak only has to win like one rotation, you'd imagine, at that point, which they end up getting two, and then the game gets blown open. It seems like Complexity is a team that when things are going well and they're in good positions, that's when they have like the disgustingly good right. performances. That's when Dashi goes off or whoever it will. But if they're not rotating, which they're not prone to do, at least not as well as like the very best teams in the game, if things aren't going well, if you're not taking those good gunfights, it just looks rough. Well, I mean, you know, make a point against the top teams, you're gonna get punished, right? And it's yeah. those small, small things, which, you know, may only have a small effect on that hill or the current hill, but you think about the future hill, it has such a huge impact on it. And you just don't really see that from complexity. And, you know, My Freak played very, very well there in game one, and that's why they're one up in the series. Uh, speaking of My Freak, I know we have Jess on the floor. She caught up with My Freak before the game started. Thanks, that's right. So actually, when I spoke with Mindfreak yesterday, Buzzo had said before the game versus United that they had a hunger for the win. Today, when I caught up with him, he said the same thing. He said, well, we're still hungry. And as you can see, that hunger is definitely driving them. Other members of Mindfreak also piped up. They were in very, very good spirits before this match, uh, just saying things like, well, we really need to make sure we win our respawns, keep our composure, and close them out. So that's pretty much their battle plan here going forward. So we'll see how well that strategy works out for them. Ben, back over to you. Thank you very much, Jeff. And I think that's the key for my free, right? Keep your composure and close out series. Close out maps, close out series. Uh, it's something that you've seen, you know, occasionally they, they play very well, but they're not able to get the results that they honestly should be getting. Uh, this is another example. They're 1 0 up now. Can they make sure they get that 2 0 cushion in the search and destroy? Of course, we go over to St. Marie du Mont as map two. You run up against Dashi, though, in search, which is uh, never an easy task. Well, I will say, though, Dashi has been disgusting, not mainly because of the sniper, but the snipers. Obviously. It's definitely like, it helps. It's going to be the focal <laughs> point. And St. Marie, I think, is probably the most difficult map to snipe on effectively for search. Maybe Valkyrie, Val actually. So, yeah, well, St. Marie is going to be a middle point. Something. Obviously, Texas is going to be king. Forest, I think you can actually do pretty well on. And St. Marie, there's a couple key spots, but, like, I don't think the sniper is too difficult to avoid on this map. Like, especially it's just like off the rip that like mid lane. It may be like going over towards A, you have to be a little bit delicate, but at least not as prevalent right. as what we've seen from Dashi in the past. If the series does go to game five, though, that Arden Forest is very scary because that was the map Dashi uh, earlier on in the year actually dropped 20 kills with the sniper full yeah. on uh, at land. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a little bit of a worry if the series goes that far. But to your point, you know, Sniper Rifle on St. Marie, not going to have a potentially as big a rally. I mean, he's, if there's a player to prove us wrong, it's going to be him, right? Just flying into the site, just quick scoping, no scoping, doing pretty much anything he wants. Uh, but I am curious to see how this plays out because, again, if my free get that 2 0 cushion, they're going to be in such a good position to close it out. Absolutely. And I think Mind Freak sort of has a similar story to a lot of the top teams in the game where it's like, yes, they haven't had success, but like if this one map went differently or if this one series, like Mind Freak could have had vastly better placings than what they've had this year. It's true. But that, that's the story at the top. If you're in relatively close competition, the details are what like puts you over the edge and gets you those wins because so many of the matches we've seen from the entire year are so close. How many 250, 249s have we seen where like literally the smallest of details is what's going to put you over the edge and that's what separates uh, the best from the average to the below average, if you will. But uh, again, from what we've seen so far, Mind Freak, the expectation is for them to be better than uh, complexity. But by how much is a solid question? You, you would say that, that that is the expectation, see, com coming in, that you, you do have Mind Freak above complexity? That should be the expectation. Okay. Uh, again, I think there's a lot of Americans that would disagree, and I think there's a small amount of bias. Uh, I think if you look at talent, like you think of Dashi and like S&D, right? But even then, like Unilad beat him 6-5 when Dashi dropped 16 kills. I think team by team, Mind Freak just is better, okay. like as a collective team. But I do think complexity maybe has like a higher skill cap, if you will. But that's only when things are like come together. But Mind Freak has had pro league practice all year. So right. yes, Mind Freak should have the edge. Well, curious to see complexity on the defensive side. Note, of course that spawn changed. 
and how players have adapted. And Blast actually going to use the sniper rifle, managed to find one that's Dens, but fighter there instantly to trade. So we have ourselves a 3v3 and bomb already down. And this is sort of why, like, sniping on this map is difficult. That is best case scenario that he hits that shot. If he misses, he's just dead. But even though he hits it, sight control still goes completely to Mind Freak. And as soon as you get sight control over by B, it's so difficult to break. And now they don't have a sniper to go for any crazy shots. It's Ricky to 1v3, and he gets cleaned up. So, again, on St. Marie, can you use the sniper? Yes. But, again, like, in terms of effectiveness, it's nowhere near as good as it is on Texas. It's not nearly as good as it is on London Docks or Forest. It's usable, it's just tough. Right, good start there from my freak. Of course, they managed to trade out in that first initial kill, get the bomb down very quickly, and their post plant set up very good as well. So now the advantage uh, in their favor. We'll see complexity now on the attacking side, looking to tie things up. And, and then it's worth pointing out, JP is pointing out stats of people have been going to A a lot more on this map, but because the defense spawns actually got changed to moved a little bit you further back, it should go back to the original of you get B site control on offense, you get the bomb down and you go. You should rarely see any difference. And I think we need to start seeing defensive teams put all of their utility off the rip of just locking down that lane. I think it's going to be you important because complexity, what are they going to do? Every single man is alive. They get bombed out. Of I mean, that's what, two rounds, two aggressive B plants within the first, what, 25 seconds of the round? And instantly you see Shocks now left in a 1v4. This is going to be almost impossible to do, especially considering time is of the essence. He has, what, 25 seconds? Take away the seven and a half seconds for the defuse. Honestly, it looks as if he's just going to wait mid-map, see if he can potentially find a kill. And, and I mean, again, like, what was the, the response to trying to break that, well, I was going to say hill, to break that bomb site? Buzzo up top red, just kind of flying out, like praying he can get a kill. And he's got two, if not three people looking at him, just be like, oh, that's the freest kill of my entire life. So, uh, again, you're going to have to find a way to stop this B push. If I was any team in the Bro League, at least today, I would just go A, or go B on offense, excuse me, every single round until I get stopped. Yeah, you, you really do have to just kind of force the defensive side to to your point, put all of their utility early in on that site. You have to stop them. Otherwise, you're just giving away free plants. It's two rounds with two plants within the first 25 seconds. And honestly, I expect to see nothing too different here from MyFreak, unless they want to try and play the mind games. That's where that could come through, right? Knowing, oh, well, the first two rounds have been B. Maybe we go for a quick A push. That's going to be a uh, center that actually leads the charge to the mid-map. He's going to jump top red. He's joined by Dashi there. And Already, site control goes in favor of my freak. The trades come through. Dashi there to shut down Dens. Blast is going for a slow peek with a sniper rifle. And it actually, all comes down to shocks and a phenomenal defensive play from Complex. And the adjustment was there. Like a previous round, we saw Buzzle kind of fly out, but he did it late after the bomb gets planted. Sensor, that was his plan from the get go. He went as fast as he possibly could to go up top red. Blast sniped in the exact same spot. And we see he's getting tagged up with nades and stuns. People yep. are shooting bullets at him. That's the distraction. Barely long enough to get the timing perfect for Sensor to get in. He picks up a huge kill. Now Mind Freak has to focus on different directions. So they came up with something to stop that defensive or the offensive push towards B. Now we get to see if Mind Freak can do something in return. That's the key, right? It's basically back and forth. Back and forth. You'll see the B push come through from Mind Freak on the attacking side. No, Sensor, of course, with that bump. I like the play from Shocks though, putting pressure mid-map, but this is the problem. Bomb's down again. You, you can't just uh, allow the opposition to plant the bomb with that much ease. Well, potentially they're going to have three players on the retake. Ammo was wide open. Time is not on their side, so they are going to have to go somewhat quickly. But uh, Complexity actually isn't even trapped in. They might think they are. I don't know if they have a player top red. They don't. So no one's top red. They're going to be worried about that angle. So the opportunity is here. But you have three people that are going to be flooding in from gate. And, and Sensor can see all this, but the smoke's coming. So here we go. Now's the time. They got one nade on site. Shocks comes in the back. He picks up one. Now the flood is here. Buzzo finds one. And Fida gets the last. I didn't think it was going to work until that smoke came was, in. Yeah, the smoke. And, and not just that to block off the line of sight, but they still had utility. Yeah. They got a kill with the nade. They got the first blood. And there's enough confusion. So, like, what the smoke does, locks off one line of sight. So all the players that are focused on one lane, they're not going to be able to whip around and help where the three players are coming in back gate. That was a good counter as well. We've seen two solid mid-round defensive adjustments. Very, very intelligent stuff from Mind Freak. The utility comes in handy, the smoke as well for the retake. Good stuff from the Australians. Now we're tied 2-2. Mind Freak back on the attack, and there's going to be another quick B play. You see they've actually spread out the map here. Um, potentially may look for that first pick on Blatz over towards the A site. So it doesn't look like it's going to come through. 
But Mind Freak playing it slow and methodical. Note the bomb is still lingering over towards B, though. So this is basically just a little bit of bait. See if they can force Complexity to rotate over towards that left-hand side, the A side. Of course, one player already falls. That's going to be Buzzo. And if they can just force Complexity to rotate out and towards A, it'd be perfect for the bomb planter. But Dems, who had the bomb, peaked. He said, is it now my time? Nope. Sensor, read that play like a book. Sensor just doing his job. Get in the B site, even if you're by yourself. Keep control. Just don't give anything up. Shox is going to be looking for him, but Sensor wins the gunfight. So uh, that's a much more difficult 1v1 than the first one around. But either way, Fida is in a 1v4, and I guarantee you they can hear him. Sensor's looking up top. He's going to be able to push through, but there's nothing he can do. That bomb is down. Sensor's watching it. If he forces his 1v1 quickly and wins it, he does still have utility. Bear that in mind. He has bomb in hand now. 23 seconds. That's the only uh, real downside here. He gets the nade kill. This is now a 1v2. And I love this play from Fighter. Goes straight for the plant. Doesn't hesitate. 15 seconds left. The problem is Dashi and Ricky look as if they're going to collapse. Does he get the read? This is just almost a, a perfectly played 1v4 from Fighter. I can't believe it. If he did won that gunfight, he had all the information in the world to clutch the 1v1. He doesn't get it. But even so, that was a hell of an effort considering the time left on the clock when he found that first kill. That's terrifying, actually. I, my, what, what? That, was, that was such a well-played, the use of tacticals, the use of utility was perfect from Fighter. He just needed to win that final gunfight. That 1v1 would have been easy. It, well, I wouldn't say easy. It's still dashing. I mean, you still have, have bombed down. All right, like. fair, but you still have full control of the site. You know exactly where he is. You have all the information in the world. It just came down to winning that 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 third gunfight, which he read perfectly as well. So I I just don't I don't understand how you should never get like killed by a nade like that if you're blastful. Like how does he not have hunker armor? Like it might have just been right. instincts. It might be super unfortunate. Uh, either way, complexity is gonna be up three to two. They do not give away anything too insane. Uh, shout outs to Ricky <laughs> just for the clutch gunfight. Dashy <laughs> looking for a pick. See shocks. You can wall bang that, but I don't think it's a one hit kill from the sniper. But hey, that, if that you're is. not behind a wall, then it's definitely <laughs> a one hit kill. He also got tagged up from top red, so Dash expecting someone to peek. But honestly, if you're my freak, why bother? Right? You know he has a sniper rifle, you know it's Dashy. You just, you know, hold top red. Don't peek. Don't over uh, commit to anything as it stands. Sensor does have bomb, and it seems like complexity. Now, thinking about that A play. And the issue here for Dashi specifically is he's got to be worried about his own flank at this point. He's responsible for it, and that's why you see him moving. So the sniper is not going to be as useful <laughs> when he's trying to play aggressive. And now the site's going over to A. Mind Freaker making the wrap, but Buzzo does get he he pulls out the sniper for so, this. So, man. That, that, so that's what I was going to say. This is what's so hard to read about when you play against Dashi is he's so aggressive with the sniper rifle. He he's often finds himself in positions you don't expect, but when he misses like that, Fighter will make him pay. Note the very quick rotation comes in from Sensa. It's a 1v2. Bomb looking to go down at B. And no, nope, Mindfreak are very split here. And it, since we can get this bomb down quickly, maybe force a 1v1. He should be good. Did he spot? You think he did? He gets the information on where Fighter is. So if he forces the 1v1 and wins it, which he will not know, Fighter wins it. A good, good gunfight from him. And more importantly, around for Mind Freak. Saw a play from Fida, just watching the cross to get the information. His teammate was coming up top red. And if you see him cross like the radio tower, you're like, hey, he's going to be meeting you with some point top red, or he's laying behind the sandbags. And if you don't see him cross, he backed up to ammo. So the information game is key. I will say for Dashy, like in that situation, if you have a sniper and a pistol and you see a man walk down the stairs, I think you just chase them. I, I think you just pull out the pistols so you're not going to have and, and chase. That we don't have to worry about getting shot uh, from the Jeeps where he ends up dying yeah. from. Just play aggressive on it. But again, that's live by the snipe, die by the snipe. And again, on St. Marie, <laughs> it's genuinely just tough. Now we got Blastful with Armored. Again, he's sniping over by B. And it's just, again, it's just so insanely tough to do. And as soon as they get into sight, he has to back out. Now he's hoping that he can hit a prayer shot. But Mind Freak shouldn't peek. They should know that this is going to be a thing, especially now. They know he has a snipe. Keep your head down. Problem is, you know, you're, you're sat there just, you know, Free firing with a sniper rifle. Your teammates are already full, and you're essentially useless at that point. Ricky, a 1v4 for him. He's found the first kill. Can he find the second? He knows exactly where Buzzo is, but my freak, not going to give that one away. And I'm going to say it, Chance. You, you, the sniper rifle at that site, defensively, I, I would put it away now if I'm complex. I just don't think you've had a ton of success. There's never been a point where you managed to find more than one kill in a round or really dominate. You got traded out the first time, second time, third time really hasn't worked. Yeah, and again, the problem is simply because Blastful is just getting there later. Like, he's exactly. not able to right. get there at the same time. It, it may have previously can. worked, but you got new timings now. And, and even previously, it's still super oh, yeah. difficult Agreed. to get the shots on. Uh, if anything, just play more passive with it. Wait for them to peek up behind Radio Tower and go for that shot. 
Uh, either way, though, uh, again, it's just very, very difficult for defense over on the B side. Anyway, Mind Freak, you see they have quad stacked as Dens has got control, and you see they burn their utility, crossing the gate. They're going to earn streaks because of it. He's got a glide bomb, and he wants to call it in ASAP. And this is going to be the first time we see a team get a two-round cushion. Fight there. It was beautiful play. Made sure he was the last player to throw that nade. Guarantee that kill. Now, though, is he going to invest the glide bomb? You have the number advantage. You're in a 4v3. Obviously, you're on the defensive as well. Don't care. He should call it in. He shouldn't waste time. They have control of B. You don't want the bomb get planted today and some crazy thing happen. Going up 5-3 to three is worth it. Plus, if he gets a kill with the glide bomb, like, they could wait for the plant. Yeah. Then he calls in the glide bomb. Then let him get the defuse for the next streaks. But they shouldn't have Mountain on the other team. You should use the glide bomb. Secure the round definitively. Something we often say, you know, use your streaks in the round. You get them because you can guess the opposition won't have. The worst case scenario now is if he calls it in and six challenges. I'll be blessed. And he, th th what did I just say? That is. <laughs> uh, he's going to die. 100% he falls here. Bus, oh! Bus turned around. He literally didn't check the car. I can't believe it. He was uh, standing next to Fighter. He was standing next to Fighter. And Fighter's going to have such an influence on the round. He gets a kill, gets an assist, gets a defuse as well, potentially. In fact, no, I don't even think he needs it. He can give it over towards Dens and let Dens work on streaks because he already got fully streaked out. I cannot believe for the life of me how close Blast was to Fighter. There's no reason. If you're in a 3v4 and you get here a glide bomb called in, you know your teammate. Someone's going to die. You know you can get inside a building. It's not going to be you. It's going to be the guy that planted the bomb. So you know that if the bomb is there, you have to lock down your side. So you have to be instantly back to watch that little alley cut to make sure they can't get to like those sandbags. And your teammate has to do the exact same thing on the other side. And you got to pray for pick. So it's unfortunate, but it's not a bad play from Blast. Oh, no. Like, he it's was doing his job. Crazy how yeah. close he was. So, so close. As now Den's looking to go for a quick plant here. If he gets the plant, more streaks for my freak. And yeah, I was going to say, if you let this bomb go down, you've you lost the round. You, you you've, yeah, this round stuck. They got two nades. Now you got them. Yeah, okay. Well, good G. GG, Mind Freak. We're going up 2 0 in the series. They're going to win this one 6 3. No one dies to the Glide Bomb. One player is on the flank. I'm assuming he gets called out. Buzzo gets that one. So it's not even Fighter that's watching the flank. He's going to be in sight, so he gets taken down. So the streaks aren't actually going to be there. Should it matter? No, you still got a 2v1 and you still get bombed down. Dashi's going for the hero play. He's got to play aggressive and he's got to make a prayer. He finds both and both find him and he's going to die in Mind Freak. Two maps in the bag. You said, Ben, they need to close out series. They're just one map away. Yeah, that's what they need to do. And it's worth mentioning, again, what you picked off from map one was their adjustment, right? How they were able to adjust. Good adjustments there in the search and destroy as well. And uh, they just honestly look better than complexity. I don't think there's any better way of saying it. A, a, a wonderful search and destroy. Well, we get to see uh, a lot of different things there. And of course, the streak usage comes through from Mind Freak, ultimately uh, can seal the deal. But Again, to me, they just look a better team than Complexity right now. Well, this series is definitely not over. Uh, it was only two maps in the books. Complexity might be able to turn things around. The question is, can they or is Mind Freak going to just end it with a hot 3-0? But you expect fireworks from these two teams on the CTF. We expect fireworks as casters and you as fans. We will get back after this break.
and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty World League presented by PlayStation 4. It's the first game of uh, the final day of the first week for Division B gameplay. It's my free currently up 2-0 against Complexity. The one thing I mentioned was you know, my freak, they need to maybe improve a little bit about closing out series, closing out games, especially the important ones, the bubble ones. Now they head over towards the CTF, which Chance, I believe you checked during that break. So far, they haven't won that. Yeah, my freak is 0-2, but at the same time, like from what we've seen from Complexity so far, you really think they're like a super well-oiled machine? No. Uh, an orchestra of a team? No, not really. I, I think my expectation coming in was I thought two teams could pull off an upset and make playoffs, like if you don't expect to be in the top four. I thought it was between Complexity and uh, my freak actually now i'm replacing unilad uh with complexity i think unilad has hope i still think mind freak has hope the complexity they just don't look great so far i mean watch them get the reverse sweep and just uh make me shove it but off the rip it's mind freak it looks like they're going to be able to get a flag pull and complexity doesn't even know what to do those players had time to wrap back and it looks like ricky is actually able to find one as a miracle shocks could have just gone but now he's going to take the gunfight but he wins it uh and he oh. might be out oh the flag of course being ran by blessy Overextended through Cole straight off the beginning, even though the pressure was coming in on his side. And honestly, that flag should be home sweet home. The last thing you want to see here is Ricky actually return that flag. You'd love to see him just go around and push through fire so the flag carrier can get the extra points, which is exactly what happens. And because of that, you get the streaks. Okay, maybe I'm crazy. That seems like a bad play from like everyone except for Blastful. Like they took so long to recognize from useless, like to wrap back. They weren't deciding what to do. Mind Freak could have just pulled the flag and ran. Ricky gets one. Oh, Fox could have just gone and like they took so long. Now Mind Freak's still pouring on the pressure, but like Blast, he could honestly even just call in a streak right here, if not take the gunfight, just to give his team enough time to wrap back. But he's going to do it just with the gun. Fighter tries to run away, and he's going to get obliterated. And by the time he gets there, Dash, he spawned off lower water, gets the kill on the next player in fire. And Complexity, doing great so far. And Blast needs to be careful. He's going to overlap his streaks here, but it's a fantastic stop from them. An early flag and full streaks. I want to send it over now to an Astro Gaming listening with Complexity. Nothing in beer, nothing in beer, right? Yo, back left, Brandon. Back left, Brandon. Back left, Brandon. Back left, 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 back you're I think nice. fast guys like ramp, 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 ramp. Yeah, could be, could pushing be up here, pushing up. Red train, red train, one shot. Absolute, absolute red train. Well, there was a, a brief listening with Complex Steve Cross. Their comms as good as ever. And more importantly, the morale's still high chance. I think that's important. They get an extra flag there. So the 2-0 lead. You still have some streaks to play with. The mortars and the glide bomb. And uh, more importantly, my freak not able to really get anything going on the attacking side. No, they've had a few opportunities, but they keep getting stuffed. And I'm going to be honest, Ben, that was like the shortest list. It was, a, yeah, that was, it was. Yeah. That was very quick. Dash, though, he's going to be the player on the defensive end. He's going to be one shot, but the trades can't come in because he got players over top watching over his teammate. Mind Freak once again on the attack. They get close, but they get no cigar. Now they're spawning up uh, over by underground, and they're wrapping back because they're worried about Ricky, who's made it all the way to trains. Yeah, he has, and you may see. A little bit of streak usage come through here. It's going to be the glide bomb first. This is going to give them a little bit of information. Two players over towards Cole's side. And, well, that helps, doesn't it? The glide bomb picks up both Dens and Fighter. It's a 4v2 for about seven seconds. But Sharks and Buzzo, well played defensively. They make it a 2v2. Dashy looking to trade it out. Sends it with the final trade. And instantly pulls the flag towards Cole. He's going to have a gunfight to win. A player is going to be right in front of him. He's not even going to take it. He's going to try to dip, and let's see if he goes straight for it. The mortar strikes don't even help him out in the slightest, but his teammates do, and he's gone with the flag. Den gets picked off, and Fida, well, he felt like he couldn't make the play because he had Ricky gunning him down, and just like that, mortars are no mortars. They get another flag on board. Center catches a nade, and yeah, that's about all you can say. Pretty much three out, minute and a half left, and Bear in mind how this CTF started. It looked so promising for Mind Freak to get that early lead, and all of a sudden the counter cap comes through, and Puxy find themselves 3 0 up. After just shy of four minutes gameplay in the first half, as the fighter now looking to be aggressive. Finds the first, two more plays from Complexity, trapped over towards Fireside, finds the second. Flag's gonna be pulled, stays alive. And his teammate with the support here, they can run this one straight through mid map and potentially even pick up some streaks here. Well, you're going for a Hail Mary nade, but that's not even gonna connect. And just like that, Mind Freak is gonna be able to get back on the board. But being down two flags is not ideal. They're gonna wanna pour one more on. Denz is trying to make the play. He's gonna spawn him lower water. And really, he only has one gunfight to win here unless Ricky comes back, which he does, and your time is tougher. Key to note, number three, that's Fighter close to streaks. He's 
essentially setting up a little bit of a pinch over towards the flag, but Denz has done so well himself. Found himself a double, and with 30 seconds left, Fighter, again, he's going to be so conscious of the fact that he's close towards these streaks. If he's able to get a flag pull out on a cap here, it'd be massive. First player not going to fall, and now he needs help from his teammates because he's so weak. And unfortunately, it's going to be Blast that spawns lower docks, and he isn't even going to track back, it seems. Fighter is doing a phenomenal job of just staying alive. 14 seconds left on the clock, and he's just looking for that extra kill to help him. And unfortunately, Ricky challenges, finds the pick, and looks as if the first half is going to conclude 3-1 in favor of Complexity. Yeah, he pre-fired a lot and just ran out of bullets towards the end, but if I'm Complexity, I am super excited about that first half they had because it seemed like a situation early on where, again, Mind Freak, if they just take that flag and go and don't waste time, maybe not a guaranteed flag cap because Blast still might be able to make a play, but certainly not going down 1-0 instantly and giving Blast full, full streaks. It was the right. best case scenario off the rip, I think, a few times even for Complexity. Like, think about Sensor. Diving in the lights, the man's one shot. The mortars get called in on lower water, which, yes, you're trying to watch the which is fine, but he needs help over on mid cut. And I think it was like Ricky that just like out of nowhere from sandbags, not only kills one, slows down the second, but I mean, again, you're a bolt away in that situation being able to do it. You're just uh, a split second decision away from Mind Freak having another flag. Again, the devil is in the details. And well, right now it's complexity that are finding the success, but off the rip, once again, Mind Freak are the ones pouring the aggression on and, and winning the gunfights. Sensor with a relatively important aid there. Just does slow down that Mind Freak push early, but for Complexity, they're going to be pinned in their base. Mind Freak looking to just collapse on all sides, and Shocks could honestly put a little more pressure on if he wants to. Denz is already outside of beer, and honestly, this is the time to go for it. Try and touch that flag, try and get the pull, and this is the pull. Denz grabs it, and looking at the minimap, Blast already overextended. And he actually should be able to get this pull. I don't think Buzzo is going to be quick enough to stop him. The nades and stuns come in. Man's got armored. He's gone, and he's got teammates supporting. There's actually one guy in the base of his opponent. Shox is going for the full flank, and he finds two. Oh, this and it, could be such a good read. Yeah, if you're Blastful, what do you do? You're stuck. You got to, like, hang out in lights. You don't know where Shox is, but now you got players chasing you in the back. This is not a fun position to be in. You're looking at Shox to make a play. He might be able to earn some streaks Did Sensor well. see him? Did Sensor see him? That's the problem. It doesn't look like it. The streak comes... In for shocks, turns around and it's dashy with the pick. Buzzo looking to try and get the read, just drops on it, gets it. That is worth great plays out of Mind Freak early on in the second half. The shocks just that, that's play of the game in my mind. Uh, I mean, of course, like complexity might still win this game, something crazy might happen, but for him to pick up two players in Cole going for that literal full flank, right. uh, man's a beast, got some streaks behind it, trying to earn as much as he can. Uh, of course, though, map control for the moment's complexity. Den's worried about that flag in the back. His teammate spawns up useless, he knows. And once he figures it out, he finds Dash in mid-map, and he's dead. Mind Freak off spawn. Lapping back to their flag. They know that complexity have full control of fire. But I don't think they expect someone flanking. Useless is going to be blasted. Does it? Oh, my goodness gracious me. Den's, you're a bad man. Buzzo on the front line trying to stop this flag from getting out. Dashy, though, he's going to be gone, and now it turns into a foot race. Denz has to make the play. As long as Dashy just doesn't die or buys his team time, which he's going to do, he gets out with the flag. That's going to be able to send one home. I think Shox is actually calling in a glide bomb, but yeah, Denz is going to have to win the gunfight. Just oh like that, the flag Lord. does get stopped. The only player left alive is going to get shot in the back, and that's Blastful. And I don't think he's going to be quick enough. And even if he is, he didn't win the gunfight. <laughs> and just like that, I told you, man, play the uh, game for shocks to get the streaks that stop the opponent from scoring a flag going up 4-2. And not only that, you're tying it up at 3-3. Three three. And Denz gets a glide bomb as well for his efforts running the flag so dangerously close to an artillery and a fighter pilot. Because of that, he's just going to sit in this corner. Wait for the push to come through. That should be an easy one. That's it. Going to go for the challenge and gives away full streaks. Complexity trade the kill out, however. It's tied game with two minutes still to go. They need that aggression. He's going to do it. Could be right now, but Fighter does a good job again of just trading on his life. Dance forced to use a streak and immediately off respawn. And, and at the very least, this is just going to, uh, well, not completely slow down your opponent, but you're going to be able to find one. You keep the other two, and that gives Buzz loads of time. Well, slowed him down just enough. You call the fighter pilot in as an insurance policy, but. Uh, again, Mind Freak did very well during the streaks to get him to run up the score as much as possible and, and you, stop the flag. And you know Ricky's going to be pulling because you just saw him in the fighter pilot. Den's too slow to turn around the corner. It doesn't matter. Buzzo was lower dock side to clean up the flag carrier. Two kills come through for Mind Freak. Is Buzzo going to be able to trade out another mid map? No, he isn't. So after uh, the dust settles, 3-3, three, three, minute 16 still to go. Den's with an artillery barrage 
His uh, decision of where to use it and when to use it could be the key component here to Mind Freak winning this map. Well, his teammates need to stay alive in Sensor was apparently one shot, but <laughs> if they don't stay alive here, this is when it gets bad because you're going to have to burn the artillery in a minute left. You can get through that if your complexity. They find two kills, and yeah, he called the artillery in already. By the time they pull this flag, that artillery might be gone, or they could just pull it uh, out towards lower docks. Fight is getting tagged up from every which way. He's able to stop the flag just for a second. More bodies are going on it, though. Ricky's watching the cut, and that flag is gone. The artillery is still there, though. The artillery runs out. Sensor had fallen over towards Cole's side. Buzzo goes to the peak. A team kill comes through. Ricky on Blaster basically shocks. He made a play earlier on in the game. Can he make another one? No, he can't. He falls. Complexity will cap that flag with 25 seconds left. My freak. They only have time for one push, and they need to fly across the map. The problem, however, Sensor putting pressure on their flag as well. With 16 seconds, you just need to see movement. Yeah, you can't wrap back. You don't have time. Screw sensor. Go get that flag and if then push it forward. If he pulls the flag, good. Yeah, Buzzo and Shox get one, but they're getting cleaned up. And this is going to come down to 1v2 situation. Shox doesn't even win it, doesn't get a bullet on him. And just like that, in the final moments, Complexity gets the win 4-3. to three. Ben, do you have a moment to talk about artillery? <laughs> you know, we, we do have a moment to talk about artillery. It was a weird one, right? Because we were talking about when is he going to use it and kind of the timing of which he's going to use it, more importantly. Comes up spawn, puts it mid-statue. And it was almost like complexity saying, well, we haven't even won the gunfights in fire yet, so you're basically just burning time off. And you actually saw Sensor, who was uh, mid-cut, wrapped towards statue, realized it was an artillery, and went, well, hold on a minute. I don't even need to push this. Went back towards call side, and was it just a massive nuisance there for my freaking closing moment. I, I mean, ultimately, like, he calls it in, and complexity goes, that's behind us? Oh, we're all in fire. Oh, great. We're fine. Yeah, and, like, good. again, by the time they pulled the flag, it was basically gone. Yeah. You have a, a streak that lasts for 15 seconds that has use for, like, two at the very most, but I mean, obviously they had a lot of streaks to work with. They earned four streaks, I think, that entire map, and they still ended up losing. So, uh, yeah, uh, complexity ultimately just made the better plays. And for Mind Freak, their search to win their first CTF here at stage two continues. I mean, they've only played three games, but still 0-3, and especially considering how close that was, you at a moment thought that the momentum had turned and that potentially uh, Mind Freak were gonna be able to close this one out in three. Instead, though, we are going to a game four. It's going to be a Valkyrie hardpoint between these two teams as Complexity look to just stay alive. And with everything you've seen so far in this series, do you see a game five on the horizon here, Chance? Potentially. Uh, from what we've seen... You, you called it at the very beginning, and it's been close. The, the problem is their hardpoint. I know Valkyrie isn't quite as rotation-heavy as, like, a forest, but, like, it's still there. Rotations are still incredibly important. And Complexity, it seems like they're just not quite on the ball with, like... Uh, like the meta of the game. Like if they're finding scrims online against AM teams, you don't need to wrap to the bunker hill at 35 seconds, but against the pro teams, those are the yeah. types of plays you have to make. And so far complexity doesn't, ha like they haven't shown that they're gonna make them. Even in search, they're losing games where they're like players are dropping 16 kills. The min round adjustments, don't seem to be there in enough capacity. Yes, they have talent, but they don't have wins yet. Are they gonna get one here? I think it's just tough. I, I think they'd have to play out of their minds. Like you'd have to see someone on this team or probably two people put up ridiculous numbers at this point to be my free. I'm sure would. And if there was anyone to step up to do that, who, who are you looking at? I, I, it has to be Blaster Ricky. Like, I, I think Dashi will get his. I, I don't think he's a player that's ever going to go, like, horrifically negative. Maybe he doesn't have the, you know, double positive performance, but, like, Blast has had a very poor performance in, in the two series we've seen so far. And Ricky is, like, 50-50. The first one he had, he played out of his mind. Uh, and then yesterday, he just simply didn't look great. So I'm looking at one of those guys to step it up. And then, of course, you talk about Sensor. I, I just don't expect him to get hills or kills, excuse me. Yeah, he'll get hills. Don't, don't worry about that. Hills. Sensor, uh, he'll, he'll definitely get you your hill time, that's for sure. Uh, but in, in terms of the kills, I mean, he had one, I think it was a series yesterday, right? The, the hard point, and he started off extremely well. And it is one of those kind of moments where it, if he does have one of those games, it's almost impossible for Complexity to lose at that point. Although definitely not his uh, main focus, that's for sure. And it's game four, about to get on the way. As it stands, Mind Freak with the 2 1 series lead. They could close it out here, or Complexity, of course, try and push that game five, looking for their first win here in stage two. This is going to be the game where Sensor drops like 45 kills. Like, Absolutely. It takes over. Like, <laughs> this is going to be the time. Uh, either way, though, Valkyrie <laughs> potentially force that game five, and you get a three clean down coming out from Complexity, and now Blast is already, well, essentially spawn killing, and he's going to be waiting for Fida. More like Fida is going to be waiting for him. Uh, Blast will not shy away uh, from sprinting forward. That's with the 3 0 start there. 
it evaporated fighter in the third fight. Unfortunately, does fall, so no early streaks for complexity, but they are getting the early time. And that's going to be important for them, especially considering how the uh, the first hard point went. Of course, different map, but still, it was Mind Freak that gave himself a pretty sizable lead. And the rotation is going to be there as well. Dashi, by the way, I, I was going to comment on this. I think the bar is just straight up better than the STG on this map, just because the bar oh, is better at close range compared to the STG. But clearly, he's off the rip. Clearly, whatever lane he watched at the start of the game is just a long line of sight. So you have the STG. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the taking the time to make the switch to the right gun. Either way, though, despite the fact that the rotation was there early, uh, Mind Freak, at the very least, is going to be contesting early on. And they have the better spawns for it. Blast, though, he's going to be going on a very long flank. Uh, and we'll see if he can make a play, but inside the hill, still just going to be Mind Freak. Plus, he should kill Fighter from behind if he gets timing on his side. And the hardpoint's still going to be contested. Mind Freak finally get control of it. And think about how long Blast has been going for this flank. Finally gets that 35 seconds left, and he dies. That was a 20 second flank for Mind Freak. Just be like, oh, we spawned out. He's behind you for Fighter. Be like, are you sure? He's still not here. Are you sure? Still haven't seen him. Oh, there he is. He's dead. Uh, so yeah, pretty good hill so far for Mind Freak. Again, the rotation battle has not been too great for complexity. They are just flying into bullets since the last one alive. Easy trades for Fida. And we already know that man's callouts, which I can't repeat on stream, but <laughs> he's making them now and you talk about rotations. Mind Freak could, is like you just might lose your job. Mind Freak here is like, all right, 15 seconds on the old hill. We've rotated to new. Wait, where's complexity? Are they here yet? No. Where are they coming from? Here? All right, we'll wait. We'll win all the gunfights once again. Uh, and yeah, Mind Freak. I mean it's only a 30 point lead, but they're making it look easy so but far. But you just have that feeling, right, that Mind Freak is going to just get a bigger lead. They're going to extend it. And so far, the feeling is true here on Storage Bunker. The first 20-ish seconds heading over towards Mind Freak. The lead starting to develop as well, 80 to 34. Complexity is kind of pushing in one by one, and it's just not going to work. Shox sits there and says, thanks, I'll take a double kill. Don't mind if I do. And, and like the players, that, that like again, it was a little bit staggered, and Complexity spawns out so far, and Mind Freak just has all the time in the world to get the perfect setup. That she finds too, but that's the kind of thing that's going to need to happen. You, to break these hills, someone for Complexity consistently is going to have to drop a two-piece, and even when that happens, it takes Mind Freak all of five seconds to get right back inside. So again, someone for Complexity is going to have to drop some serious numbers. Dude, you need some, someone like John. When you watch John play Valkyrie Harpoint. He's consistently getting double kills, triple kills. He's always putting pressure in the right places. And so far, you haven't really seen that too much from complexity. As Buzzo looks as if he's going to try and go for a last second push, ultimately falls. And my freak for the early time. Give me someone like John. Yeah, if only. <laughs> if right? only every team be like, hey, let's get John on our team. This is great. I love having one of the best SMGs in the game on my team. But uh, I think more importantly than that, you need good teamwork. And there's some teamwork coming in. They got the triple pinch on the last player, Fida. They're able to get through, get full control of the hill. And this is where complexity looks great. Even on the first hill, when they get set up, when they find themselves in good positions, this is where complexity can actually turn up and run teams over. It's just about finding uh, these spots to put themselves in. Ricky, he knows the player's coming in the back. He has a pre -end. Very difficult gunfight for Shox to win. He's going to go for it, but he only gets a bullet. Ricky takes him down, and it's a clean wipe. Complexity, when they're in good spots, can wipe out their opponents. And note how close the streaks Ricky actually is here as well. Dangerously, dangerously close. So uh, keep your eye out on him. He's going to be number two on that minimap to the top left. He's just lingering at the old hill for now. So we're not going to have too much to do, but it's very important here that maybe he just... Uh, slows down a little bit, plays his life, because you see 605 to 700, the current score. And he's basically going for that kind of wide flank, if you will. Should spot fight him mid-street, teammate kills him, and Shox reads the play, finds the kill, no streaks for complexity. Yeah, at the same time, though, he was very far away from the hill, so his teammates were dying inside. And now we have another situation where complexity is not the full best setup, but Dash is leading the charge, and he doesn't oh even clean God. up the kill, but he's going to find the head. He's looking for Den to take some down. But complexity, they still have hill control, albeit not a lot of hill time, but they should be good. Now they got Blast Wolf. Well, he's going to die to <laughs> Fida. Doesn't have bullets in that gun. Nope. I think that was Dash's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 19 seconds of smoke stacks left. Buzzo going to be the first for Mind Freak to go for the challenge. Wins the gunfight as well. Sensor looking to just trade that one out, but he's so heavily tagged up, he's kind of forced to just back away here. So it looked for a moment as a complexity, we're going to tie the game and potentially go into the lead as we head over towards a second rotation of hills, but not going to be the case. Mind Freak still with a very, very fragile lead.
This is vaguely similar, I, I think, to what we saw from Forrest, but like on the flip side of flip things, side, where yeah. Complexity doesn't have a lot of success on a rotation battle, but the first till they reign king, and that's what we saw for Mind Freak game number one. Uh, either way, though, well, we talk about domination on the first till. Mind Freak, they get the clean break. They get the opportunity for this setup, and now Complexity has to break on through uh, the attempt. They're going to try to send one guy to stagger and die on one side of things. Two players are going to attempt to flood through this hill, and Fida's like, please, by all means, flood through this door. I'll kill you all. It's amazing what happens when you funnel through a, a small channel, if you will. Very easy kills uh, for Mind Freak. Oh. Fighter ultimately just gets traded out. The hill broken by complexity. 20 seconds left on the vents. Will they finally be able to take the lead in this one? That's the question. Shocks. Staying aggressive, though. And ultimately, the hill goes back in favor of Mind Freak. And, and so, Shocks right now is doing the exact same flank we saw Blast will do early on. But look how earlier he's doing it. I was going to say, Blastful got there with like 38 seconds left on the hill. Shox is going to be here off the rip. Now, Blast will get awareness by him. They're aware of it because they want to keep these top right spawns. But the entire team from Mind Freak, this is their focus. They're not looking to flood in the front. They want to lock down the good spawns in the back, and they're going to get them. Already have them. But 45 seconds left on the hill. You got to win the gunfights to get inside, and it's not going to be easy. Complexity is still in full control. You can wall bang this wall, or you can push forward, and hopefully oh. not all die to fight it. Thank God Blastful picks up too. Nice early time as well here in operations for Complexity. They have earned that lead, and the Maestro just continuously slay out Mindfreak despite Mindfreak having that beneficial spawn, and still the trade's in favor of Complexity. Ricky gets a double. You are asking for plays from Complexity to start stringing together kills simultaneously. Ricky with three inside the hill. A wonderful turn of events here for Complexity. And that's what it takes, but now you got the fight over towards next as well. Keep in mind, when we saw Mind Freak do this earlier, they locked down this heckin second hill from the get-go, and that's why they got old time. Complexity not finding the same success. Blastful, even if he checks this corner, you got players from Mind Freak in each. He's going to have to wait for his teammates because you see they are very far away. He's being patient so far, and I think this is the correct call until he doesn't check his corner. He dies. He's going to spawn and be 15 seconds away to not even be able to help his team. Yeah. Now you, you almost in the similar situation on the opposite side with Dashy, right? Play patient, wait for your teammates, and then go for a full collapse. As long as they can win their gunfights, and you can see the effect it has on the minimap. My freak now spawning out. It comes out to complexity, actually winning the fights inside the hill to try and break through. But a good hold from Dens and Shocks as they just by themselves, shut down a four-man complexity push. Making plays, and once again, Mind Freak, they all spawn up nice and close to the hill, and he got Shox leading the charge, and Sensor gets the kill, but he's going to be one shot, but Dashy over top, he's going to get taken down. The pre-fire comes in from Dens, and Sensor, well, he's able to find two, what able to heal up, hold. but it's not good enough, Mind Freak, perfection. What a beautiful hold from Mind Freak. Two of their teammates spawn out, and they still hold on to the hill. They buy enough time to retake the lead. The score 212 to 191 as you rotate over towards office. Complexity with the early setup, but the kill straight away from Mind Freak shut down any early time. Plus has to go for the trade, finds a double. Den's there to trade that out. Ricky finds the pick. Complexity looking to get the time now. Ricky in the hill. And, and this is what it takes, again, for Complexity. They're going to have to find these big two pieces, if not more. They're going to be inside the hill, and Ricky's going to be watching the flank. he got two players that are going to be flooding in. Ricky is guaranteed to find one, and he's going to make it two. And Blastful got two on the front line. Second time in a row, Complexity has been able to lock down office. Such a cheeky little corner there for Ricky. Allows two players to run straight past him. Didn't shoot the first because he hurt the second and just secured himself uh, two kills as opposed to just one and being traded out. Complexity, to your point, holding down office very well. 15 seconds left on the hill. They have a 221 to 212 lead currently. Their problem, however, all game has been breaking hills. If Mind Freak can get a good setup here, they could so well still win this game. Early prediction, I know both teams are close and can win it on smokestacks, but I think it'll end up going back to ventilation room. We'll see if that takes place, but it is Mind Freak with control early on, but this is where you're going to need to see complexity. Go for the pinch, work together as a team, please, for the love of God. Mind Freak are spread, but they have everything covered. Dens wins the first one-on-one. -on -one. You got a couple more coming in. Buzzo's going to fall. All complexity, they got to make their move. I know Buzzo spawns out here as well. Complexity just collapsing in on Fighter. He's the last man for Mind Freak on the hill. Three players go down. Now Complexity take control of the hill. 238 to 230 game. Mind Freak, they have to push, but that's not the greatest nade Buzzo's ever thrown. Luckily, though, Dens does find a pick on a player on the hill. There's still Ricky alive in the hill, though, for Complexity. The collapse is coming through. Hardpoint now going to be contested. 248, 230. Bear that in mind. All Complexity needed two more points as Dens looks to go big for the Australians with the support of Shots. Are they going to be able to fully wipe out Complexity? No! Dens falls. Complexity hop in the hill. And Buzzo isn't going to get there. We're going to a game five. Love to see some game fives, Ben. Love exciting action towards the end.
a lot of things could have been done better that game. That nade was about as rough as you could get. Super unfortunate, but uh, it looks like Complexity had the firepower on that final hill. So again, uh, maybe the rotations aren't as good as you want if you're a Complexity fan, but Towards the end, uh, again, they picked up how many like clutch two pieces on yep. office. Blastful was picking them up. Ricky was picking up. Dashy was picking up. Uh, and I think Sensor, like obviously you criticize the man for kills sometimes. Halfway through that game, he had a minute and a half in the hill. I don't know what he finished at, but he might have broken two. Yep, very, very good performance for Complexity. And well, the reverse sweep is on early here in the uh, last day of this week's gameplay for Division B. Complexity were 2-0 down. Now they tie things up. 2-2, forcing a Game 5 search and destroy. We'll be right back after this.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty World League, presented by PlayStation 4. The first game of the day, and we're going the distance. We're going to a game five, search and destroy on Arden Forest. I do want to point out, after map two chance, I looked at you and I said my biggest fear for Mind Freak and something they've said themselves is closing out games and closing out series. Well, it's reverse sweet alert time here. Mind Freak were 2-0 up in the series and now Complexity looks to fulfill the reverse sweep. Well, and Mind Freak put a lot of pressure mid-map. You actually have two players over by A, both with AR. Sensor's inside a cabin as well for the trade. Potentially, he's going to be on bomb. He's got Vita crossing him and at least trades his own life out. All of a sudden, we got a 2v2. Ricky's back. Ice is able to spot both players, and Blast is working for cabin cut. The issue here is, yes, if Buzzo plants this bomb, oh. Shock simply can't watch everything, but Blast has a sniper. I think Shock saw Blast cross right at the last second, whereas Blast doesn't really have the information on where Shox is. He does have a nade. Kobe, that's what's back rock. Is Ricky going to peek at the same time? No, nope. Ricky actually working to come together here with Blast, but it gets the hit marker there. Misses with the sniper rifle, and honestly, if you're Mind Freak, you think, all right, well, this is a 2v1. One gets traded out. Ricky for the 1v1 versus Buzzo. He gets a hit marker with 20 seconds left. He has the information. What shots that is. Ricky up top, man, getting the 1v2 clutch to kick off the round. You know where he's going to be. It's not an easy gunfight to win, but... As you said, what shots, and that's about as good as it gets. Like uh, That's a, a momentum shift, right? Like, if you're mind free, you're like, crap, we just lost last two. Let's get back into it. All right, boys, we got Bond down. We know where it is. Oh, and we lost. It's a 2v2. We know he has a sniper rifle. Everything is good. And then Ricky gets a 1v2. Oh, wait, uh, especially that <laughs> gunfight. That, that is honestly one of the worst feelings as a player. When you lose an advantageous gunfight and your entire team is watching you. Yep. <laughs> Our last one alive. Everyone just kind of sighs. No one says anything. It's like, all right, on to the next round after a five-second pause. Now, of course, the first blood does go to Buzzo. Sensor drops, so early numbers advantage. Going to be nullified almost immediately by Blast. He shuts down Shocks, looking for a second, gets it. He's traded out. Now again, another 2v2. Huge gunfight from Blast, not even just for the first, but the second. Uh, and now the round is it's feasible. Dash also can get to this power position, but he wants to get the bomb first, and he's able to get out of dodge. But the concern, of course, is where's player number two? They know one guy's in dome. They don't know if the other guy's coming on the flank or if he's going to be mid, and they're going to have to sniff him out. But he got spotted. The information's there. Now it comes down to the timing. Spider shows up and made. He got to win the gunfight fighter, though. Not an easy one to win. And for whatever reason, Ricky's worried about the flank. He's not there. Yeah, Ricky doesn't really need to worry about the flank at all. You, you still know that Denz is over towards his side. And Ricky, as soon as he looks the correct way, guns Denz. That definitely helps. 2v1. Fight at last one alive. Last seen mid. Can he pull off a miraculous clutch? Ricky puts shots down. Dashi readjusts where he was planting. Fight at full weak. Falls. Nice play for complexity. A yeah, small window of opportunity. If I was able to kill the bomb planner, we're just on the wrong side. But again, the adjustment came in instantly. Ricky's probably not going to let that one go anyway. But uh, yeah, the 2v2 played to perfection. Of course, the play of that round does go to Blastful. Uh, again, not just to get that kill on you. To find that second player just before you die evens things up. Nice plays coming out of him. Well, complexity with the early advantage here in game five. Two rounds to O. Now, of course, if we head back onto the attacking side for Mind Freak. I'm going to see a, a, a B push. Looks to be the play. Sam's going to be carrying the bomb for Mind Freak. Just an 8 up top. Nothing there. Fighter falls almost instantly, as does Buzzo. A 4v3, or make, sorry, make that a, a 3v2 now in favor of Complexity. Shock's going to be working on the full flank. The bomb going to be working over towards B, but you're praying for a pick, and when you got three players stacked up like that, you're going to get traded out, best case scenario, and Denz, well, he is going to be able to cross. And note how important that is as well. Look how close the streak Ricky is. Let him get that. If you, honestly, if, I, if I'm complexity, hey, Ricky, I'm about to get streaks. We're going to let them plant this bomb, and we're going to three-man retake. We might leave someone back ice, but we're going to go all the way around. You want to go through no man's land because it's a little bit more difficult for the guys to watch, and that seems to be the call. Dance is going to plant the bomb. Number seven is the guy getting close to streaks. He needs to play his life, let his teammates do some of the dirty work. Not an easy retake, but you got the man advantage. You should be able to make it happen. Hey, man, Ricky retook this 1v2 in the first round. You should be good to do a 3v2. Unless, miraculously, shocks and Dens can clutch up. Time is definitely being burnt. Sensor put some shots in over from Bunker's side. Nope. Again, keep your eyes on the white arrow on the minimap. Highlighted is going to be Ricky. 
He's just looking to get good timing with 20 seconds. Time is at the essence. If you're complexing, you got to go. That's a big opening. Dens falls. Shocks should be traded out. Ricky gets the kill, gets the defuse as well. A perfectly executed pinch from complexity, making sure the player close to the streaks gets the streaks. It, it did seem like they took a little bit too it long maybe to go long, there. Right. Like, like that bomb gets planted and Ricky doesn't get to back ice for another like 15, 20 seconds. So maybe you want to see him faster, but once they got there, they did it perfectly. I was thinking go through no man's. They both go through cabin cut. If you have subs, that's almost certainly the better call. So you don't have to deal with the guy on a head glitch uh, with the AR. So good stuff. You got three rounds on the board. Mind Freak is the complete collapse here. Certainly seems so. And bear mind complex the streaks as well has full streaks. Ricky, of course, the artillery, glide bomb, and fighter pilot. And you see the way he's going to play this. Backs all the way up. And if you're a mind freak, Ricky hasn't died yet. You can see the score. You know he has streaks. You, you pray they have some mountain passes. Even still, if you have mountain, if you're out in the snow, you get spotted anyway. And for whatever reason, the guy without mountain is not playing where he can get inside. He's playing in the middle of everything. So yeah, he's going to fall. And this should be another round of complexity. 4v2. Last playing ring around the rosy. Finds one. That's five tab, but Dens with a snipe of his own. Thinks it from a 1v4 to a 1v3, but I wouldn't hold your breath if you're a Mind Freak fan. Dens surely should fall here. Whiffs the first shot on Dashi, a tough one. Stung grenade thrown, connects. The nade gets thrown, connects. And look at the way Complexity are playing this. The pinch comes through, and ultimately he falls. Another. Round win for complexity. And I'm sure there is a rational reason for why the one guy without mountain is the guy that's playing in the middle of the field. And I think that reason is you need armored to watch mid map. Is that a good reason? No, it's a terrible reason. You're gonna die the first blood. You've seen nothing. Oh, maybe they're planning to call on the streaks. Yes, okay, I'll just die. So not a good uh, concept coming out for Mind Freak, I don't think. We'll see if they mix it up a little bit more, but complexity are looking like they're just going to Run them over. Looks that way in the game five. A 4 0 lead now. I bear in mind Ricky's still with an artillery and also a fighter pilot as well. And Dens sniping over towards A. Not going to be able to find a thing as well. You get one great opportunity to hit that shot. It's off the rip. And now you're just hoping that you can rip someone off the head glitch. And Dash is just going to play the wiggle game. And I don't think he'll get picked, honestly. You're hoping for a prayer. And again, they're going to be stuck in bunkers because they got more streaks to deal with. Blast has mid, mid map, excuse me, cut off. Tough spot for Mind Freak to be in, in all honesty. You're just hoping Dens can make a prayer. I mean, when is the time to maybe use that artillery? You can just artillery from Bunker. And honestly, you, you put a stop completely to Mind Freak's pushes. Blast looking to push through a smoke grenade with a sniper. You don't see that every day. Wraps back over to watch the cross. It is a 4v3 in favor of Mind Freak. Bear that in mind. However, Ricky is still alive. Blast falls. Ricky turns. He drops sensor on sight. 1v3. Sensor for the hero play. Mind Freak, they are playing super controlled, though. They waited for their teammates, and that comes off the first blood. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to see it, but Dashi somehow falls cabin wall. They didn't even use their smokes to get the push, so obviously complexity. They had to have messed up somewhere, or maybe it just came down to a bullet. Who knows? But for being in a tough spot, that's a very important bounce back round for Mind Freak. They're going to need a couple more of those. They're going to need quite a few more rounds where they burn some streaks, make some uh, kind of hero plays, because now that they're back on defense, you can't let the bomb get planted at B, but you also can't give up complete control A, because that's just tough to re-break. So we'll see what they do, see if they can uh, pull something I, out of the back. You definitely have to think if, if you're complexity, you plant a B, you put artillery on the site. You know, it, it's an easy round win. Very, very easy round win or potentially even use a fighter pilot to break into B, if that's the potential game plan. You see, again, number seven on the minimap, Ricky, playing all the way deep back bunker. Is he going to opt to use the streak? Yes, he is. There's the fighter pilot. And there you go. This time, Buzzo makes sure he can get in cabin straight away, even if he doesn't have mountain. You love to see it. Fighter, by the way, on the flank, wins the huge 1v1. And yes, he gets cleaned up. But either way, you do so complexity <gasps> down a little bit. Oh, Shocks actually tried to put some shots into Ricky crossing. So Ricky does have information that another Mind Freak player is crossing. You know, Dens is going to be deep as well. Buzzo mid map, 3v3. If Mind Freak retake after a fighter pilot investment, that is huge for them. Shocks might not know it, but like they need to kill Ricky in this situation because I think he's got the streak. So yeah, the pressure's coming in from Bell, but 25 seconds, time is ticking down. And if he stays alive long enough to call on the artillery, the round's over, but he dies. He dies. This is feasible. You're going to find the second in front. Buzzo's going to let that kill trade it. Now it comes down to Blast. Blast finds one, doesn't even find one. Now he does. Buzz is going to be one shot. Players over top. And he oh, sticks the. Wow. What? Why? Wow. 
last 1v3. Eat your heart out, Australia. A wonderful clutch from him. 12 seconds. You, you get seven and a half diffuse. Blast is maybe not like completely tagged up, but he's, he's right he's in front of you. Why do you hop on bomb at the very least? Just stay alive. That was, that was an okay one v three from Blast. Like it wasn't even great. It was mind freak just playing dumb. I, I don't know. What can you say? Maybe I'm crazy. You, you, Ma kill, maybe. you killed the guy with the artillery as well, so the round is is almost 100% secured. Like, am I crazy? It, it was that a smart I, play? You, like, you, I, you had time, to, especially considering. I think it was bigger the fact he was weak, right? And you're so close to him, you can force that trade, uh, and essentially secure the defuse that way. But complexity now five one lead, an artillery barrage still in Ricky's back pocket. And honestly, you can just drop this on that kind of that back B side right now and cause a whole different world of pain. Nade just to check if someone's on site. Ah, the artillery gets put down. And uh, Mind Freak are aware uh, this artillery is going to get burned and uh, to no huge avail. But it does, of course, Burns allow. a ton of time off the clock, though. Hey, time off the clock and you keep positioning. But I mean, obviously, they're still going to have, what, 45 seconds to work with. Yep. It's still completely feasible. And one player actually crossed and Blastful didn't see him. And now, if that player just shoots him, there you go. Uh, perfect opportunity right now for Mind Freak. Bomb instantly hopped. And bomb instantly. How dropped. do you play where you can get killed from dome? Ah, ruins, whatever you want to call it. I call that dome, but to each his own. Well, bomb now being planted again. 3v3. Dashi with the sniper rifle. Connects with a stun grenade. Buzzer's going to go up top. Buzzo very almost dies, but he is alive still. Shock shuts down Ricky. So 3v2 in favor of Mind Freak. Dashi with the sniper rifle mid map shouldn't. Theoretically, cause too many problems here. Ultimately, the last man, the 1v3, goes for the jump shot. I mean, hell, why not, right? You may as well go for something impressive in those situations. I just, dude, these rounds, man. There, there's just some SD rounds where, like, maybe I'm just reading them, like, incorrectly. So uh, I feel free to, like, tweet me if I'm wrong. But, like, you shouldn't be getting killed from dome when you're planting the bomb. Like, at the very least, the guy should be able to watch over top and kill that guy if he kills you. Of course, Mind Freak still gets that win. But even, like, that, that 1v3, man, that's just. That hurts my soul, Ben. It hurts my soul. Mind Freak, though, they got to win, what, uh, another four in a row, I think it is, yep. to get this dub. We'll see if they can pull off a miracle. The streaks are gone. That's the that's the one saving grace, right? All yep. streaks are gone, and I believe there's one player from Mind Freak actually working towards it. Maybe Shocks. Um, pretty sure it is. No, is it Dan? Dan's as well. I, I know one of them is relatively far. Maybe I'm completely crazy. We'll see. Oh, Dan's, yeah, about halfway towards a glide bomb. It'd be huge if he's able to get it. And Fighter's in such a rough spot. He's getting players tagging up through the wall. Actually, yeah, I, I don't know who that was. Number five, Blast, I think, just starts wall banging him, just takes a guess on where he is. But as soon as Fighter's teammate Buzzo falls for the cabin cut, he has 18 directions to look for. Now the retake is going to be here. Dens and uh, Shocks working for it. Player comes on the flank. It Shocks. He falls. Dens for the 1v4 with bomb down at A on Forest. It is literally an impossible situation. And Complexity, they complete the reverse sweep in just a heartbreaking fashion. Yeah, I mean, you, you think about it, right? After game two, Mind Freak up 2-0, you're thinking, all right, this is fantastic. They lose the CTF by one flag, even though, to be completely frank, it felt like they controlled that map a little bit better, especially in the second half. The second hard point, unbelievably close. Again, they had moments where they controlled it completely. They get to the game five, and that just didn't. That was the one map I can convincingly say Mind Freak at no point looked better. Yeah, and of course on that map as well, like yes, Ricky gets streaked, so he's going to get full credit for that. But I think Blastful had the really key play that uh, allowed it to happen. Because keep in mind, it was the round where he's in you and he picks up two kills to put his teammates in that 2v2. That's where Ricky, he's getting the kills in those rounds. I don't know if he got the bomb plan. I don't think he did. I think Dashy did. But that's the round that started the streaks uh, from Ricky in a... Uh, what is it? Blastful doesn't find those two kills. You're never going to have that happen. It's going to be too tough to retake. They probably lose that round. So Blastful buys them around win, or at least puts his teammates in a spot where they can do it. And he gets the ball rolling for Ricky Gitta's streaks. And that's ultimately what I think did the most damage uh, and allowing Complexity to win. It's and huge screws by Mind Freak. Yeah, true. It's worth mentioning, you know, congratulations to Complexity or Reverse Sweep. That's always good. You get a win on under your belt. But I still feel there's a lot to improve on. Like, you, you look at all of those games, it definitely felt at times there was some, some sloppy play. Hardpoint, particularly, you mentioned the rotations a, a fair amount of times, and I think that's something they can go back, watch the VOD, and hopefully improve on. But for Mind Freak, again, they, they show the class. They're just not able to close things out. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, unlucky for them. We'll see them in action again next week. But congratulations, Complexity. Again, they get their first win under their belt. We can now send it down to a PlayStation Instant Reaction with Jess.
Thanks, Ben. So that was a great reverse sweep, but of course you were a little slow to warm up. So why was that? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I think we're really prepared. I think we go hard. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Um, you know, you can't take any team lightly. All the teams that are here are here for a reason. So it's a pro league. Everyone's going hard. And I'm just really happy that we're able to come back and get the reverse sweep. All right, so what was uh, what what was the takeaway or what did you learn from that series? Um, what I learned from that series is that our team's pretty resilient. I think that we easily could have won all the matches that we lost, but at the end of the day, every game is going to be close. You just have to have um, composure and you have to have teamwork, and I think that's the biggest thing that we're working on through the stage is going to continue going. So uh, I'm really proud of the team for the reverse sweep. All right, and how do you feel overall about your first week here at the Pro League? I love it here. Uh, I think MLG does a great job sending us up in our apartments, taking care of us, giving us catering, Uber credits, uh, grocery store credits. So uh, they really take care of us. It's a lot of fun playing here, and I just can't wait to play Optic next uh, Tuesday. Awesome. Great to hear. Thank you so much for the interview. This has been your PlayStation Instant Reaction. We'll be right back after a quick break.
kick off the day with a very well-played series, 3-2. to two. Complexity going to be able to take it in the end. And for the first time this day, we are going to be jumping into our analysis segment and break down everything that actually did happen in the series. My name is Rich. I'm going to be your host, and I'm joined on the desk by two of the greatest minds in Call of Duty. We got Revan and Nameless here. And guys, let's just jump straight to that matchup, start to talk about it. I'm going to start with complexity, though. Doug obviously has been gassing himself up quite a bit. How important is it for this team for him to actually be able to live up to that pressure they kind of put on himself? Yeah, I think Doug puts a lot of pressure on himself, but I don't think it affects him like personally or his teammates. I think his teammates are confident in his ability. The thing is, he hasn't been performing too well thus far in stage two, and it really shows like in that team when they're not slaying, they're not able to hold down hills or rotations, and they just look a bit sloppy. And I think the reason is, is that they're not as organized in game and it's affecting that team in the hard point. So he needs to pick up the kills if they're not gonna become organized or it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah, and another play I'm looking out for on the side of Complexity that really stepped it up this series was Blast. Uh, yep. You look at him in the first series that they played, uh, he didn't have a big impact, especially in Search and Destroy, but he stepped it up in this series against Mind Freak. And Mind Freak came out guns blazing. I mean, they jumped out to an early 2-0 lead. They came back in that hard point, but in that CTF, they had the early lead, and they just let it slip through their fingers. And if you're a Mind Freak out there, like, you got to close this series out. you got to find a way to do it. Yeah, I mean, we talk about Complexity, and we say, okay, look, there are these pressure points. We need to see Doug play at a certain level. Well, we need to see this, we need to see this. And if they don't have that, they're going to be an inconsistent team. If we see all cylinders firing, this is definitely a squad that can do really impressive things. We're waiting to see just what they can do in our league. But Mind Freak, on the other hand, is also going to be having these inconsistencies across the board. We've talked about it day in and day out, season from season. This is a team that has had slow starts at times, and this is a team that's having struggles actually closing series out. And this time, Revan, it's going to be just that, the struggle to actually close things out because they have just about the best start that you could have to a series. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I was saying, they, they win the map one hard point. They follow up with a, a nice search and destroy victory. And then the CTF, they build such an early lead, they let it slip through their fingers. Then going into that Valkyrie hard point, you lose by 20 points. And then things just crumble from there. Going into that fifth map search and destroy, you get blown out 6-2. I, I think it was Ricky who gets streaks early on for complexity. Blast. Uh, or Blast, yeah. One oh, of Ricky them. got the streaks and Blast had that 1v3. Yeah, the 1v3. Crumbled. Yeah, they just crumbled at the end. And you just got to mentally keep yourself in the game. That seems to be something, an obstacle that Mind Freak just can't get past yet. Yeah, and you know, we need to start thinking about these squads as a whole in this division. And we're going to be looking at the schedule and see all the teams that are going to be playing today.